Hi folks, and welcome to another video documentary from A Plain Truth. Uh, before I get on to the, today's subject, I just want to give a shout out to the fine folks at What Happened on the Flat Earth This Week website. I highly encourage you to check out their website uh, daily. They post anywhere from 5 to 20, even more uh, posts on all the new Flat Earth documentaries, videos, uh, news stories, and they really do a great job, and I really appreciate it for one. So just a big shout out to them. All right, so let's go to uh, today's subject matter. All right, so we're going to be talking about the attitude instrument, the horizon attitude indicator on planes. And uh, the question is, how does it adjust for the curvature of the Earth while flying uh, in the air? So to get started, um, we know anybody that's flown on a plane, if you fly from across the country in the United States, when they get a cruising altitude, the plane stays level for hours and hours and hours. There is no adjustment for the curvature of the Earth, and we want to find out why. So if the Earth were a sphere, airline pilots would have to constantly correct their altitudes downward so as not to fly off into outer space. If the Earth were truly a sphere of 25,000 miles circumference, uh, a pilot wishing to simply maintain their altitude at a typical cruising speed of 500 miles an hour would have to constantly dip the nose downward and descend 2,777 feet, that's over a half mile, every single minute. Otherwise, without the compensation, in one hour's time, the pilot would find themselves 166,660 feet, there's that number again, or 31.5 miles higher than expected. A plane flying at a typical 35,000 feet wishing to maintain their altitude at the upper rim of the so-called troposphere in Wood Iowa would find themselves over 200,000 feet high into the mesosphere with a steadily ra raising trajectory the longer they go. I have talked to several pilots and no such compensation for Earth's supposed curvature is ever made. When pilots set an altitude, their artificial horizon gauge remains level and so does their course. To maintain a 30,000 foot altitude around a round Earth, the airplane would have to be angled significantly lower. All right, so how's the math on this? This is basic, basic spherical geometry, folks. It's not difficult to comprehend. From the surface of the Earth, the escape velocity is about 7 miles per second or 25,000 miles per hour. Given that the initial speed an object needs no additional force applied to complete to escape Earth's gravity. Now this comes from a NASA telling us how we would have what we would have to do to escape the pull of Earth's gravity. Now here's a chart. And so simply what we're trying to calculate is how many feet does the Earth have to have, have, have curvature if it has to curve, how many feet as each mile traveled would we have to uh, uh, see the curvature of the Earth, all right? So it's a basic formula here to determine how much the Earth falls away on a curve. You take miles squared times 8 inches. That's miles times miles times 8 inches to determine the distance of how much Earth would fall away. So here's a couple calculations. For one mile, it would be 5.33 feet. At 10 miles, now get the numbers here, 66.666 feet, or 1.26, one and a quarter miles. At 100 miles, now this works inversely now, the, the longer you go, the more inverse the relationship is. At 100 miles, you get 6,666.66 feet, or 12.62 miles. If a pilot is, uh, is flying around the curve of the Earth, then it sh he should be dipping the nose down um, every, every five minutes. He should be dipping the nose down to, to stay around the curve. But the thing that really um, uh, got me interested was, as you say, the gyroscope. In, in a plane, there is a, um, an artificial horizon. Okay, and it's based on a gyroscope. And if you spin a gyroscope um, on a surface, it will want to stay upright. You can twist and tilt the surface as much as you like, the gyroscope will stay upright. So, if a plane has a gyroscope and it starts um, following the curve of the Earth, mm. the gyroscope would stay upright, which mm. means your, the uh, um, artificial horizon will start to, to roll backwards. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't. Mm -hmm. That's absolute proof that a plane flies over a flat surface rather than a curved one. Because um, I asked the pilot 
um, on my last flight. Uh, you know, does do you ever notice the the auto, um, the artificial horizon uh, rolling backwards? He said, no, no. But the artificial horizon has complex electronics in it to to make sure it knows where it is on the Earth and it compensates. But I went to um, the manufacturer of the artificial horizon and they confirmed to me that it's completely mechanical nothing electronic in it at whatsoever so it's it's literally just a gyroscope that can freely move so that right there is proof to me that um you know planes fly over a plane so let's take a look at the artificial horizon attitude indicator uh how how it works uh, with this instrument, the pilot receives instantaneous indication about pitch and roll. Roll indications are indicated at the top of the pitch with the aircraft image relative to the background in blue and brown. It uh, goes on to state that it's necessary for this to fly paramount for flying in instrumental meteorological conditions. Uh, here's a picture of it. The aircraft image on the instrument is fixed and the blue-brown background is able to move up and down. Some have brown and part of blue, blah, blah, blah. The gyro, as shown in the image to the right, right here, uh, the gyro lies horizontally in the inner gim gimbal ring. The outer gimbal is pivoted wingtip to wingtip and moves the background plate. The center gravity of the gyro and the pendulous unit is below the suspension points, thus making sure the pendulous unit can erect and is able to keep the gyro in horizontal plane. Nowhere is there an electrical device or any adjustment whatsoever whatsoever to adjust for the curvature of the earth which it would have to and the math is at 500 miles per hour for a half mile it would have to dip down every minute to stay on the curvature of the earth this is a mechanical device we need to go out to the uh, pilots who all believe that the adjustment for the curvature of the earth is done electronically in this device itself it's not it's a simple gyro device there is no adjustment for the curvature of the earth thus disproving the global heliocentric theory just in this one simple example so here's what wikipedia has to say about the attitude indicator or the artificial horizon attitude indicator as it's also known an attitude indicator, AI, artificial intelligence, also known as a gyro horizon or artificial horizon or attitude director indicator, is an instrument used in aircraft to inform the pilot of the orientation of the aircraft relative to the Earth's horizon. It indicates pitch and bank and is primarily as a primary instrument for the flight in instrument meteorological conditions. Attitude indicators are also used on manned spacecraft where they indicate the craft's yaw angle as well as pitch and roll relative to fixed space inertial reference frame. In closing here, folks, uh, we can go to every pilot and every pilot will tell you it's the electronics which adjusts for the curvature and just show them this piece or just show them every evidence you want of how the altitude adjusting horizon, artificial horizon works and it's basically just a gyroscope, strictly mechanical. There's all the proof you need to disprove the curvature of the Earth, folks. It's right here in front of us. It's super simple. All the pilots have been programmed to believe it's already in the instrumentation. When here we clearly prove, along with allegedly Dave, that it is clearly not. Peace out.